Well, so I packed up and I made up to Derringer, singer, musician, record producer. Frankenstein almost didn't make it on the album, and I don't think anybody ever <laughs> expected it to be released as a single. Why With Edgar am I Winter. Trying to get here when no one gives me a try. Why am I dying to live if I'm just living to die? And the Edgar Winter Group. I went right out of high school into a hit record, Hang On Sloopy. That time I was playing guitar and singing with the McCoys. We had several other chart records, but Hang On Sloopy was definitely the biggest one. I met uh, Edgar Winter while helping co-produce one of his brother Johnny's albums. That time Edgar was doing his first album, which was definitely an album for himself only. It had jazz and classical and some, some rock in it. Uh, didn't seem to be a really commercial kind of album. After that, Edgar went into a different kind of direction, got together a group called White Trash, which was a New orleans -y, Texas kind of rock and roll band, and I helped him make the White Trash album. Uh, about that time, I joined the band, joined White Trash, and went on the road with him. After about four weeks, I came to Edgar and I said, hey, uh, this is, I just can't do this anymore. I've been doing it for seven years almost, and I have to rest. I think my time has come. But as it turned out, I kept playing with him uh, until the Roadwork album was finished. Then at that time, he got a new band together and went in a new direction, which is what he's doing now. It's a smaller band, uh, can do pretty much whatever kind of music he wants. He isn't restricted by any kind of limitations anywhere. And there's a song, as a matter of fact, called Keep Playing That Rock and Roll that seems to explain pretty well how Edgar got involved in the business. Don't you know that I was sitting back in there? I packed up and I made up to You know that I've been doing
Hi, Edgar. Hi, Rick. I think everybody would probably be interested in knowing how that song came about. Well, it's my true life story, in a sense. It, it tells how I came from Texas to New York and uh, also how I came from music into the music business. It is uh, sort of a satire, but yeah. it's all true. Well, you've been on the road for about two and a half years now. Does it seem to be getting any better? Uh, I'm enjoying it more, you know, but uh, if you keep your energy up yeah. and uh, take care of yourself, you gotta it's, take care uh, of yourself. <laughs> yeah, if, if you don't, uh, you'll find yourself sort of crazy. The, the thing about the road is uh, it's, it's difficult to write, which is one of the things that seems to always bother me because I'm really interested in writing. Yeah, there never almost seems to be enough primarily. time. Yeah, plus that just the whole effect of the road changes your ideas and your attitudes, the way you relate to things and what actually you would write. So keep playing that rock and roll, for example, is more uh, typical of a song that you would write on the road, yeah. whereas uh, the song which I'm about to do, uh, Dying to Live, was written at a time uh, when I was in between bands, sort of down and depressed. and. Uh, through writing the song, uh, I came to feel better. It helped me just feel better about myself, what I was doing, and I can only hope that uh, those who listen to it will feel the same way.
I'm ready to die. Frankenstein almost didn't make it on the album, and I don't think anybody ever <laughs> expected it to be released as a single. Actually, it was a song that I had written some two, three years ago when I was playing in uh, my brother Johnny's band, uh, and it was written for a double drum solo. One of our it big numbers. It was always called double drum solo, right, we wasn't called it? it the double drum song. Didn't even have a name. Later, when I started getting into the synthesizer, I, I needed a, you know, a song. So I just uh, adapted the double drum song, and then we started calling it the synthesizer song. There was a lot of talk about how much editing was done. The tape was really cut to pieces, and that was one of the uh, ways in which the name Frankenstein applies. The song, the song seems to fit the title. That's what I like about it. And it is visual type of music that uh, you can see pictures right. you know, when, you, when you're listening to it. <laughs>
I don't really think of myself as a producer. Sometimes I'm not even sure there is such a thing as a producer. What I try to do in the control room is just work with all the people, make sure they know what they want to do, and then help them do it. Cooperation is the main thing. Sometimes I even play various instruments, whatever is needed, with the band myself. Uh, I think the record should reflect not really my taste, but it should reflect partly my taste and everybody in the group, and hopefully the people that are going to buy the record too. Uh, hope you enjoyed the music we did today. <laughs>